Hearing and Discerning the Spirit of God. The following material is from my book, The Guiding into Truth Work of the Holy Spirit. It is also available free on Google Play Books and Apple Books. Perceiving the Spirit of Truth Jesus tells us to take heed what and how we hear. He is speaking of what we hear spiritually, more than he is speaking of what we hear with our ears. He also goes on to tell us that God will measure things to us according to the measure we use in measuring. One application of this principle is in giving. Another is in how we measure truth. We perceive the spirit of truth through the various ways he guides us. Witnesses with testimony. Messengers with messages. Teachers teaching. The word of God. Dreams, visions, prophecy, signs, and wonders. We may hear the words of witnesses or messengers with our ears, but we hear what the Spirit of Truth is saying in their testimony and messages in our thoughts. Our thoughts is the area where we need to take heed what and how we hear, and how we measure. The biggest problem is how do we know what is the Spirit of Truth, and what is not. Fortunately, God has given us instructions. He has also described how the Spirit of Truth works compared to how evil spirits work. So, we recognize the Spirit of Truth by using the ways the Scriptures tell us to use, and we measure the words and fruit of the Spirit speaking, and compare them to the standard of the Word of God. Necessary Safety Precautions As one might imagine, some very bad things could happen if one mistakenly follows what is spoken by an evil spirit. Bad things could also happen if one mistakenly rejects the guiding of the Spirit of God. Not attempting to hear and be guided by the Spirit rejects His guiding. The consequences of this is living on the fruit of our own way. There are two main safety precautions we should take to reduce the risk of not correctly discerning the truth in our hearing. The first is putting on the armor of God. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 17. The prayer is simple, but very effective. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your armor, and we put on your armor truth, righteousness, the preparation of the gospel of peace, faith, salvation, and the sword of your spirit. The second is to submit our desires, beliefs, will, words, and thoughts, those things that work to cause bias in our hearing. Discerning, measuring, the spirit of truth. When we hear a spirit speak to us, we determine if it is the spirit of truth by looking at corroborating evidence, the evidence that the scriptures instruct us to use. The burden of proof of truth is on the Spirit speaking, not on us. We ask the Spirit to provide evidence of the truthfulness of what it is saying. We ask the Spirit of truth to give us evidence of the source of what the Spirit is saying. We may not, however, be like the Pharisees and demand more evidence than is necessary to trust. Our responsibility is to hear the evidence given, trust and obey the Spirit of truth. Corroborating evidence may come from any of the ways the Spirit of Truth guides us. Witnesses with testimony. Messengers with messages. Teachers teaching. The Word of God. Dreams, visions, prophecy, signs, and wonders. We perceive the Spirit of Truth speaking to us in our thoughts. Ask the Spirit to confess Jesus is come in the flesh. 1 John chapter 4 verses 1-3. The first thing to do is ask the Spirit to confess that Jesus is come in the flesh. The Spirit of Truth will not be offended. After all, He inspired John to tell us to do this. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God, 
Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. 1 John chapter 4 verses 1 to 3. As you hear the Spirit in your thoughts, you can ask it to confess in your thoughts. In your thoughts ask, Is Jesus Christ come in the flesh? God has told us how His Spirit will answer, and how an evil spirit will answer. Ask the Spirit to confess Jesus is Lord, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 3. God tells us another confession that can only be made by the Spirit. No one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 3. Just as in the previous confession, ask the Spirit speaking to you to confess that Jesus is Lord. Listen for the fruit of the Spirit, Matthew chapter 7 verses 15 to 18, Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23. Jesus tells us that we recognize true and false prophets including spirits, by their fruits. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23. When the Spirit speaks he will do so in a way that expresses the fruit of the Spirit. An evil spirit will not. An evil spirit will frequently be accusing, condemning, harsh, etc. Listen for the fruit of the Spirit when asking the Spirit to confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, or that Jesus is Lord. An evil spirit may try to confess Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, but does so in a way that is bitter, snotty, grudging, etc. Listen for the viewpoint expressed 1 John chapter 4 verse 5. The Spirit will speak from God's viewpoint concerning things of God and His kingdom. An evil spirit speaks from the world's viewpoint concerning things of this world. They, spirits of Antichrist, are from the world, therefore they speak from the world 1 John chapter 4 verse 5. An evil spirit typically speaks of cares of this world, lust of other things, pleasures of this life, trust in false riches, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes what others think of us. The cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. Mark chapter 4 verse 19. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life, how we want others to think of us, is not from the Father but is from the world. 1 John chapter 2 verse 16. Listen to how the Spirit listens to you. 1 John chapter 4 verse 6. The Spirit of God is courteous and respectful. He is sent to help us, so He is sensitive to our needs. Whoever knows God listens to us, whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the Spirit of truth, and the Spirit of error. 1 John chapter 4 verse 6. Ask for confirming Scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1. Compare what the Spirit says to the standard of truth, God's Word. Ask the Spirit to give you confirming Scripture. You may hear the Scripture directly, see it when you read the Bible, or hear it spoken by someone else. Your word is truth. John chapter 17 verse 17. They, the Jews in Berea, received the word preached by Paul and Silas, with all eagerness, examining the Scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Acts chapter 17 verse 11. Typically, when the message from the Spirit of God fits Scripture, it does so simply, plainly, and powerfully. They, the words of wisdom from God, are all straight to him who understands and right to those who find knowledge. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 9. The message from God also tends to fit more spiritually, rather than carnally. It is important to have the Spirit demonstrate how what it is saying fits with Scripture, and not measure by how we think it fits. Does what the Spirit says direct us to a higher, more difficult level of life? What God speaks to us typically directs us to a higher level of life, frequently a level beyond our ability to reach, a level that requires us to submit to God's power. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 to 9. Some examples where God raises the bar. You therefore must be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. 
A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. John chapter 13 verse 34. A person who claims to be continuing in union with Jesus ought to conduct his life the way Jesus did. 1 John chapter 2 verse 6. Go and sin no more. John chapter 5 verse 14 and chapter 8 verse 11. Is what the Spirit says consistent with God being the sole source of truth? But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Genesis chapter 3 verses 4 to 5. Satan was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. John chapter 8 verse 44. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ, and are turning to a different gospel, not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. Galatians chapter 1 verses 6 to 9. Does it convict of sin, righteousness, judgment? John chapter 16 verse 8. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Does what the Spirit says glorify Jesus? John chapter 16 verses 13 to 14. The Spirit of truth will glorify me. Is it consistent with the intentions and character of God? 2 Timothy 3.14-17. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Do others led by God have a confirming witness? 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 29. Let two or three prophets speak, and let the others weigh what is said. Let the Spirit provide the confirming witnesses. The burden of evidence is on the Spirit, not us. Soliciting the witness of others carries some risks. Are they measuring correctly, without bias, etc.? Hearing a Spirit with a message in a public meeting, presents a special case. In that case, it is more appropriate to seek out a confirming witness from one appointed to such a role in the meeting. Confirmation in objectively verifiable events or facts. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 21 to 22. How may we know the word that the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that is a word that the Lord has not spoken. Does what the Spirit says work to produce the fruit of the Spirit? Matthew chapter 7 verses 15 to 18 and Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Matthew chapter 7 verses 15 to 18. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23. Does what the Spirit says work in the direction of sanctification? John chapter 17 verse 17. Sanctify them in the truth. Does what the Spirit says work in the direction of freedom from sin and bondage? John chapter 8 verses 31 to 36. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say, You will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever, the son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Is what the Spirit says true in creation? 
for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. Romans chapter 1 verse 20. Jesus used examples from creation as evidence of truth in his teaching. Every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Matthew chapter 7 verses 17 to 19. Does what the Spirit says change or waver? Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. James chapter 1 verse 14. Discerning measuring the spirit of truth versus your own thoughts. The risk of mistaking our thoughts for the spirit is greatly reduced if we ask the spirit speaking to provide the evidence of the truth of what is being said and ask the spirit of truth of the source. The risk is greatest when we take on the task of providing the evidence. Ask the Spirit of Truth to guide you into the truth of discerning. The Spirit will work to help us discern our thoughts. Listen for the viewpoint expressed 1 John 4 verse 5. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world's viewpoint 1 John 4 verse 5. Just as the world speaks from the world's viewpoint, our thoughts will tend to speak from our viewpoint. Is the thought speaking from God's viewpoint, how things relate to God and His will, or is the thought speaking from our viewpoint, how things relate to and affect us? Whose resources, skills, and ways are involved, ours or God's? Is what the Spirit says consistent with our thought patterns and desires? My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 to 9. God is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Our thoughts are typically consistent with our previous thoughts and our desires. Our desires and beliefs work to create a bias in what we think, do, and say. God may speak to us along lines that do work to provide things we desire. When He does so, He will provide evidence that proves the source of what we hear. Note, one desire to be especially alert for is the desire to be seen by ourselves or others as right. Self-righteousness is a very strong deceiving force. How to hear the Spirit of Truth more consistently. The Spirit of Truth speaks to those to whom God sends him. God sends him to those who meet the necessary conditions. When the Spirit speaks to us, we need to hear him. We can hear more consistently by training our ears to hear and recognize him when he speaks. Obey, align. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. John chapter 14 verses 14 to 16. God sends the Spirit to speak to those who obey him. Whatever we ask we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. 1 John chapter 3 verse 22. If you turn at my wisdom's reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you, I will make my words known to you. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 23. Those who keep God's commandments receive from him when they ask God to send the spirit to guide them into truth. God gives to those who give. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Luke chapter 6 verses 37 to 38. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 to 8. The Spirit testifies about Jesus and glorifies Him. When we praise God and give Him thanks, the Spirit will frequently join our praise with testimony that glorifies Jesus. Note, the entire book of Revelation is a revelation of Jesus, testimony that glorifies Jesus, that God gave to Jesus to show His servants. 
when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me, Jesus. John chapter 15 verse 26. He will glorify me, John chapter 16 verse 14. The Spirit helps us pray, especially when we are praying for others. Likewise the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Romans chapter 8 verses 26 to 27. The Spirit also helps us testify of Jesus. Do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Matthew chapter 10 verses 19 to 20. Ask. God is faithful to send the Spirit to guide those who ask. You do not have because you do not ask. James chapter 4 verse 2. Ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent, or if he asks for an egg will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Luke chapter 11 verses 9 to 12. We must trust God to send the Spirit when we ask. Doubting will hinder hearing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. James chapter 1 verses 5 to 7. Asking for wrong reasons will also hinder hearing. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. James chapter 4 verse 3. God sends the Spirit to those who ask for truth to glorify Jesus, to become more fruitful and to know God better. Forgive. Whenever you stand praying, forgive. Mark chapter 11 verse 25. We have what we ask in prayer when we obey God and do what is pleasing in His sight, by His measuring. Forgiving is pleasing in His sight. Not forgiving is not pleasing to Him. Judge not and you will not be judged, condemn not and you will not be condemned, forgive and you will be forgiven, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap, for with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Luke chapter 6 verses 37 to 38. Value the guiding of the Spirit. If you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Proverbs chapter 2 verses 1 to 5. I rejoice in the way of your instruction more than in any kind of wealth. Psalms 119 verse 14. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Psalms 119 to 72. We hear the Spirit according to the value we place on what He says to us. If we consider what He says to be of great value, He will speak more to us. If we consider what he says to be worth little, he will speak little to us. Because I have called and you refuse to listen, have stretched out my hand and no one has heeded, because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when terror strikes you, when terror strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently but will not find me. Proverbs chapter 1 verses 24 to 28. Pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use it will be measured to you, and still more will be added to you. Value what the Spirit tells you enough to do what He tells you to do, and record truth He reveals to you, index cards, audio recording, computer file, etc. Be spiritually minded. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, 
whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. The Spirit speaks of spiritual things. When we think of spiritual things, we are more in tune with what He speaks. We should work to avoid thinking about tares, the cares of this world, pleasures of this life, false riches and desires for other things. Matthew chapter 13 verse 22 and verses 11 to 13, Mark chapter 4 verses 18 to 19, Luke chapter 8 verse 14. As Jesus says, Do not be anxious saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Matthew chapter 6 verses 31 to 33. Sow the word of God into your heart. Matthew chapter 13 verses 18 to 23. Sowing the word of God into our hearts serves at least two purposes. First, it works to build within us a standard of truth for measuring truth. Second, it produces fruit within us that helps us hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Matthew chapter 13 verses 18 to 23. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Sow the book of Proverbs into your heart, Proverbs chapter 1 verses 1 to 6. All scripture is profitable for building a standard and working to help us hear. The book of Proverbs, however, is written in a condensed way to be particularly effective in building a standard of truth within us and helping us perceive truth. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance, to understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. Proverbs chapter 1 verses 1 to 6. The word of God sown into our heart works to replace our experience as the standard we compare to when we measure what we perceive. The book of Proverbs is inspired specifically for concentrated standard building. The standard we compare to is a critical foundation for aligning with truth. It is necessary to correctly measure what is, what is possible, processes, paths, the state of our being and how we change. Ask God for fear of the Lord, Proverbs chapter 1 verses 23 to 25 and verses 28 to 31. Our desires and our reasoning are pretty powerful and pervasive forces. Fear of the Lord works to overcome these and helps us trust in God to guide us. If you turn at my correction, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you, I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refuse to listen, have stretched out my hand and no one has heeded, because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my correction, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when terror strikes you, when terror strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer, they will seek me diligently but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof, therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way, and have their fill of their own devices. For the simple are killed by their turning away, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. Proverbs chapter 1 verses 23 to 33. There is a fear of the Lord, which is a reverence for a holy God, whose very being is so intense that it destroys that which is unclean. 
There is another fear of the Lord which is a revelation of truth from Him, that there are certain circumstances which will destroy us, circumstances that we are unable to avoid without His guidance and are unable to overcome without His help. The key to being trapped by these circumstances is to trust in our own perception of truth, to select our path and order our steps. The key to avoiding these circumstances and overcoming them is to trust in God for our perception of truth, and to trust in Him, to select our path and order our steps. Ironically, fear of the Lord leads to great confidence and boldness because we have the certainty that if we trust in God and let Him direct our path, we are absolutely as safe as we can possibly be. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord, and turn away from evil. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 to 7.